Lightning on scan, nearly getting the kill against Paradise, but the shields are already falling on the core. CE is in trouble. MVP Black going in for that kill, trying to take game number one. The sound barrier comes out. 20 still there for the Chinese team, and the core is down at 50% as MVP Black is going in for it. And they are, and there's no chance for CE to stick around in this one here. No 20 and no chance for the members falling on down, and the game just being too stalled out to a point where they just could not ever contest MVP Black. Yeah, it was pretty impressive also on the support side what we're just seeing from MVP Black here. With Arthas in the setup and of course then you have against them Lokta on Sul Jin. That was definitely one of the worrisome moments. But Anna alone had a hundred thousand heals in this game and then another 50k on Sarko and Uta even though he was more focused on utility and trying to empower Greymane. So it was really difficult to kill anyone on the side of him. And I want to take that point even further and just give the viewers at home a bit of perspective. 100,000 on Kyocho alone. The combined efforts of both Brightwing and Lucio only netted 100,000. Just feel how much influence Anna actually had in this game. MEB Black takes game number one and we're going to of course hear a little bit more about our first map in this series from our analysis. That's right, difficult to kill off MVP Black there, as they were mentioning. Anna putting out so much healing on the backside of that. And whilst MVP Black did win that game, there were still some glimmers there for CE. They still looked what I would consider to be more formidable than I expected them against MVP Black. Yeah, what a team needs to do if they're going to be able to defeat MVP Black is you got to be aggressive early on. MVP Black plays like they own the map every step of the game. So if you can get out, find them where they're trying to take maybe multiple mercenary camps at the same time and punish them for that, then you're going to be able to keep up with them. And CE did have some right. picks earlier on, but in the mid game, that's where things started to really go the way of MVP Black. I feel like when we had the double sleep darts coming through, it was a setup with the double sleep yes. into a root from Arthas into cocktail damage for days. And we saw so many moments where it was a sleep or a double sleep into a root, which sometimes was a triple root just because the angle was so good there for a test. And then you just see this damage has happened over and over and over again. Yeah, Everyone yeah. on CE is too low and then they just get bullied behind the wall. And we saw a few times where Garrosh almost punished that, where we saw Reset die over the wall that one time there at the key. But overall, Black played safe enough when they had those advantages, and I think that's really what won them out. So they would use Garrosh as their own way to engage, actually. Tist multiple times would walk straight into that Garrosh and yeah, force a fight. Yeah. yeah. Is, uh, there, is there any hero that Tist isn't good at? <laughs> because I don't think I've seen his artist before, but even that was phenomenal. I heard he's not very good on Nova. That's right. Oh, unfortunate. Uh, well, that's I a hard one. Teams can that's definitely nice take advantage of that one. I have got word that we had a little bit of an unusual situation as I do interrupt you guys for a moment. So, um, Twitch went down whilst we were, or we our stream went down whilst we were towards the end of that. So we're going to oh. replay the last minute of that fight so that people can see the conclusion, as we don't want you to miss a thing back at home. Uh, so as you can see, if you'd like to do whatever you wanted to do to recap what happened in the final minute, I mean, we could just watch this last fight happen here. You can see that uh, CE is playing very passively here. Punisher's heading up. Keep's going to go down. See this root again? These are the roots I'm talking about. Everyone's low, and now Black could just bully anyone. Punisher gets a double stun, and this is just a field day. Good play here by Aluful to try to disengage. Saves everybody from dying, but it just feels like this is the end of the line here for CE. Too much pressure. Everyone's too low, and they don't have supports that can burst heal everyone up like this. And it's just kind of a runaway train for, for Black at this point. Constant cocktails, constant coming in, the 20 to 19, and three-man Punisher coming in. It was just a little bit too much as the rest of MVP Black sets up pretty well here on the core. Sonya, of course, with Greymane, pretty deadly. Yeah, so you say Sonya Greymane, and it's not just that those two together are deadly, but for MVP Black, these are just about two of the best picks for Rich and Reset you could ask for. Uh, Reset averages something like 4.7 kills per game when he plays Greymane, and when you look at Rich, uh, resets Greymane yes. and then uh, Rich's Sonya, they die on average very little. Get them off of these comfort picks, it's a different story. Then they're kind of more over aggressive. You might be able to get picks, but getting those two together, I felt like already kind of spelled what that game was going to look yeah. like for CE. I feel like it was like a miracle comp in, in a certain way. Like you have these two players on their best heroes, you have a comp that can work with the sleep darts into the roots, and it was just Tist, I think, was probably the best player in the game in terms of just setting up these plays. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. he was like a setter in the volleyball game and then reset, slam it, you know, <laughs> smash it over the net. And we just saw over and over and over again, he steps up the plays that we coach his sleep darts. And then if you're CE, who's running an unusual draft, a little bit less practice, when those things go wrong, like, what do you do? You kind of just have to hide behind the wall and Black yeah, yeah. just goes and goes and goes. I do want to say that uh, it was... 
an ambitious composition for them to try and come in against MV Black against with just the Zul'jin to try and kind of win that out for them. But it feels like if you're going to go up against MVP Black, sometimes that's what you kind of got to try and do. Uh, I mean, Wotar win. did look comfortable on that yes, hero. Yes. I just don't think that they expected how much Ana can be quite annoying to play against offensively and defensively. That mm. Sleep Dart consistently Absolutely. just shut down the entire team. You would see a Sleep Dart come out. Paradise would get locked down, yeah. sleep for a couple seconds, and they would just ignore a Murden. You don't ignore <laughs> they a Murden. Just, they just punished Paradise so many times. That's something I also wanted to mention is Paradise was trying to hide in the bushes, do the Murden thing where you get a little mm. bit of extra vision. Yeah. You threaten to stop the rotation, try to dismount people. He was slept and killed over and over and over again. He was punished by every time he overextended, got interrupted in his dwarf toss or was slept before he could get into his dwarf toss. They wait for him, kill him instantly. They just kind of collapse on him. We, we see this actually in, in Overwatch as well with, with Ana, where you sleep someone, the rest of the team is too far away. Everyone just blows them up as they wake up. And, you know, in that position, because you're being the murder and you think you have that escape, you go far away from your team. Yes, but when yes. you get slept, there's no way out. All right, short interlude now whilst we get ready for game number two. 